and welcome everybody here in Twitch chat and everybody on YouTube for the return of Midrange Frostbite. As you all know, this is the deck that I believe is the best deck in Legends of Rune Terra right now. It is just so good. And usually on Sundays we do rank up Sunday, and so that's why we're going to be playing this deck. Um, I do have two donation decks for today, so we're not going to be doing a, a full-on uh, rank up Sunday stream today, but we're going to play the best deck in the format and see how it does through the five games. Um, making one little change from the last time that I played it, I am going to take out the Flash Freeze and play a third Brittle Steel. Brittle Steel is just so great. So we're going to go with the third one of those. Um, but yeah, it's you know nothing, nothing too new here. I like having a Fury of the North in the deck to just have as, as a pump spell, um, you know, to have like usually as a combat trick. I really like that card, but maybe that should be a third Sejuani because of how just ridiculous Sejuani is. Uh, that's certainly possible. But we're going to go ahead and just play it like uh, as is, like we have been. And uh, let's start the stream off with some wins today. Savios, hello, hello. Um, yeah, so like if you don't have Sejuani, uh, yeah, you know, you want to play other champions. You can play two Darius. Like, Darius is, I guess, probably the closest. But Katarina may be a little bit better than Darius. Maybe you go, like, one Katarina, one Darius. Um, Elise, Callista, Sejuani. Well, I'll keep the Culling Strike because it's... I guess it's just good against Elise. It's not good against Callista. I can pair it with Brittle Steel to take down Callista. Well, that's a good one drop. So if, if they go turn to Elise and I kill Elise with Culling Strike, then they have a 3 3 with Bark Beast. Okay, good sign. It's I not turn to Elise. Nothing escapes my watch. Okay, so this looks like this is a they who endure deck. Um, so this is a problem for me, right? Because I don't have or like if I just pass, I'm wasting a bunch of mana. I hope they don't just go Callista. That would have been nice to be able to take down Callista. I guess I would have had to use Brittle Steel and Elixir, or Brittle Steel and the Culling Strike. <clears throat> I don't want to just waste all that mana. Safeguard our homes. It's tough. It's a tough one. It did have Callista. It's really unfortunate, which is why I'm not blocking, so they don't just get one of the three levels up level up on Callista and start leveling up Callista super fast. Could have gained four life by just brittle stealing, but didn't really feel like doing that. Um yeah, Sej Sejuani is just the is probably the sing the most powerful singular card in Legends of Runeterra, so it definitely has a pretty big effect. It is an incredibly good card. Um, yeah, like it's it's a it's a huge step down playing the other cards instead of um, instead of Sejuani. It is a pretty big step down. Hmm. 
Just, they just have too much mana available as far as Reckoning goes. There you are. Please work. All right, good. That's clutch. Well, we drew fewer than North, and I'd much rather have drawn Sejuani. So that's that's good to note. It looks like it didn't matter. I was about to say that we had three more uh, Omen Hawk abilities that we didn't see yet, that our next thing would have been plus two, plus two. So it would have helped out Triparian Assessor. Yeah, that's the thing about this deck. It just has, like, Reckoning, which is basically one-sided board wipe. It has Triparian Assessor, which is just tons of card draw. It has the best interaction with Elixir of Iron, as we saw there, one mana. Keep your thing alive, or Brittle Steel, one mana, kill your thing. The best interaction. It also has the, the largest units. Just kind of across the board, everything with this deck is just oversized for the mana cost. Alright, so <clears throat> honestly, all of these cards are good. I'm just going to put Reckoning back because it's a six drop. But Elixir of Iron. I mean, that's still good, too. I don't keep that. I, I mean, I want units. That will work. But I love Culling Strike against against Braum and Anivia. Especially Braum. And that's the thing about Reckoning. Is Reckoning is great against Braum and Anivia as well. Especially if they go wide with a bunch of Braum and Anivias. They're out there. I'll spot them. The trap is set. Took the bait. Glory Seeker is also pretty great against. I don't know if I save that. I don't think I do. I probably say I should save Elixir of Iron for Glory Seeker and Ash. They walked around. All the world on one arrow. Lady Elise, where are you? They do go <clears throat> well they're not gonna have Braum now, but you know, like this is this is a great card against an O5. I mean, I hope no ruination, so I'm not playing around it. Hey, Tizzle. Good morning. Yeah, Spooky Teemo. That's going to be a fun one. Looking forward to that one as well. Uh, which deck do you prefer, Braum, Anivia, or Callista Hecarim? I prefer, I mean, as far as what to play, I prefer Callista Hecarim. The deck that's probably better is 
probably Brahmanivia. But I would prefer to play Callista Hecarim. Hey, Marcel. Hello. That's pretty good. So even though we save Ash, I just have a one health Ash now. We know they're gonna be ha they're gonna have some five fives. Yeah, like that should have been. That's what I was gonna say. Is that should have been a five-five from that half frozen trapper. Forever watch. best Vladimir deck um, would either be like Vladimir Lucian had some success with that kind of deck style before um, or or like a Vladimir Sejuani um, you know in the crimson kind of cards I think that's probably where you're looking at um, I've had I had played a Vladimir Hecarim harrowing deck previously and I liked that but I haven't really tried that since the Noxus nerfs especially the Crimson Disciple that was a big part of that deck was Crimson Disciple um, I can I can try Marcel like what what question do you have That's a good card. We've had tons and tons of interaction at the, these two games. That's what I want to see in this matchup. I want to see Hearthguard and now Trifarian Assessor, right? Like that's that's really where our power comes from is Hearthguard then Assessor. So like I'm probably gonna have to just culling strike this Agnivia. Probably. See what they do. play that hearth guard we'll see how this goes
Yeah, I won't. I don't have any breaks. I won't have like breaks between them, Marcel. You can just put the code here. I'll see. But do you have any questions about like any any specific questions I can help answer about your deck? Like maybe something that, that say your deck struggles with, or anything that you want it to be better against, or anything like that. So they cast Entreat, so we know they have a Braum or an Anivia in hand, and if, if it's an Anivia, then it, that means they have a Harsh Winds. Hey, Shreeb. Anakano. Hello, hello. No, I wouldn't mind them using Harsh Winds. I would be happy with them playing Harsh Winds. If they want to play Harsh Winds, I'm, I'm honestly happy with that. Because that would just shuffle Anivia back into the deck and they wouldn't have Anivia in their hand. Because I'm going to be calling striking this thing afterwards. And I don't want them just to replay in Anivia. Okay, so they're blocking here, wanting to put one point of damage on the Ash to put Ash down to two health, because then a Nivea attack will kill Ash. So I think I may need to just a Brittle Steel. Keep that from happening. Opponent is really takes their time. I don't know if it's like a connection issue or something. Uh, no, a glory seeker is the best to drop to be playing in this kind of deck. Okay, good. That's good news. That's good news, because yeah, they thought that like their Anivia egg was gonna stay alive, so they didn't need the extra harsh winds. Oh, they had the third Anivia in hand. Boo. So if I play Icefield Archer. It's not really worth playing Icefield Archer. For my homeland. Cause I would let Icefield Archer die. Nothing escapes my life. So do I want I guess I want to draw Crystal Arrow, right? Not and ready. Avarosa, guide me. Yeah, so we're gonna have Crystal Arrow on top now. Yeah, Assessor would be the best card to have underneath it, for sure. I need to hope that these two cards, neither one can do two damage and kill an Ash. I need to hope that. Yeah, so like the the crystal arrow still gives we still get the top card. Either way, it's just they'll they'll have priority first. That's a pretty good card. That could draw us. That could just be you know that could just draw us into Trifarian Assessor. Which is pretty crazy. Will no one listen? So an eight four ash. So if they have harsh winds, I 
I was only going to do 13 damage if they had harsh winds. Now if they have harsh winds, you know, I'm doing 18 damage. After after playing the Babbling Bjerg. No, I mean, they would have played Ruination after I Crystal Arrowed. If they had Ruination, they would have just snapped Ruinationed. You know, in an instant. No, no reason not to play Babbling Bjerg. Because again, if I because if I go straight to attacks, and they would have I didn't and like let's say I don't have this Babbling Bjerg and they harsh winds the two six powers, I'm only doing thirteen and they're at fourteen. Oh, I was talking. I was explaining stuff. Sand trap. So that's why we play the Babbling Bjerg because we know they don't have Ruination because they would have cast it. And now if they have harsh winds, they're, they're still dead. Now begins a new era of peace. Alright, we are two and oh. Yeah, I know, right? They've been they've been playing so slow with just a couple of cards in hand the whole time and then they use the thinking emoji on me. Well, okay, so Marcel, what is this? You can't have all these different regions in a deck. You can only have two regions. I don't understand. What, what's the point of your deck, Marcel? I mean, again, Reckoning is, is great against both Swain and Ezreal, but I think kind of like last time, I need to mulligan it. I, and I want to keep the Culling Strike. Fury of the North also, again, great. But I, I don't think I want to keep the expensive spells, I guess. I don't know. Those are both great cards. But it, really, the Fury of the North, because, you know, Swain Ezreal is all about small amounts of damage or, you know, like just damage in general. And Fury of the North saves it from damage and also does a bunch. The worst cards in my deck in this matchup are Frostbite cards. So Mulliganing and getting Brittle Seal, Brittle Seal, Harsh Winds, these are the, the worst cards in my deck. Joke debate. Like actual worst cards in the deck. Right there. Well, great start for them. I guess I do have Fury of the North to protect. But I kind of want to go just wait and then next turn go Enrage GID and then Assessor immediately. case of thermogenic beam. Oh, I should I should be attacking. I should be attacking because I brittle steal that thing. That was a mistake by me. No, I wish I would have Omen Hawked first. Loyalty through conquest. Uh. 
Well, I got kind of rewarded for not omen hawking first there. This is where Fury of the North can be great. Ravenous Flock is scary. Because they could still have another thing to kill the Enraged Yeti, and that would be bad. If there's a 3 damage spell, I wouldn't be scared, but... Yeah, the Ravenous Flock, that's scary. Alright, that was a great turn. Yeah, that was a great turn for them. Now both their Swain and their Ezreal are leveled up. Not good. Not good. They don't know what they're really not good. Time for a true display of skill. The trap is set. It's not bragging if you can back it up. Yeah, that was nailed it. They've had they've had a, a perfect hand. Their hand's been perfect for that deck. But our deck's amazing, so we'll see. Um, this would be a lot better as a 5-4 assessor if we would have had the Omen Hawk first, but oh well. That's even better than Enraged Yeti. Destination in sight. Hmm. That's worse. Stand and fight. That's the worst card for us to see. Need to find Culling Strike or Reckoning. By my hand, the Noxus Grand General. Draw two cards. We know one of them is Enraged Yeti. Let them find hope in the rubble. Or our way to turn and let's see, okay, so. This was the top three. Three, so it could technically be the fourth card down. We've drawn one, two, so it's it's either, so 50-50 shot, whether it's the next or the one after. Just thinking with Assessor if I should be waiting or, or not. The calm before the storm. Probably don't have the time to wait and waste all that mana. Alright, we need Reckoning and Culling Strike. Search little life.
Like, if they have absolutely nothing, we would win this turn. <clears throat> That's not having absolutely nothing. Oh, I can only do nine now. Hey, Cabo. <laughs> yeah, great, great hand for them. I, I, you know, I, I'm, I'd be very confident in winning this matchup most of the time. I think that our deck's pretty favored here, but you know, they they had a great hand, and I had, you know, in my right, like on turn one, I had brittle steel, brittle steel, harsh winds in my hand on turn one. Really not what, what you want at all. I mean, I... Killing. These wounds only make us strong. I wish I would have kept the Reckoning, you know, like... That was something, remember how I had that Reckoning in hand? How I said, like, that, that card could be amazing. But I mulliganed it, and then we got all those other cards that weren't very good. I wish I would have just kept that Reckoning. I don't know, lesson learned. I think I, I think I probably should have. Hmm. I l again, I like all these cards. I don't really like having two four mana cards in the opener but i like all of these cards individually i'm gonna mulligan ash it's a little weird i think on turn four i want to play babbling beard no elusives are not as strong as they used to be um, the Shadow Assassin nerf hurt Luc hurt Elusives a lot. I mean, that in Will of Ionia. Honestly, there's just not really much reason to be playing Ionia these days. Ionia is is really struggling. I'm gonna like I'm play I'm playing the Shen Barrier deck next because I'm trying to I, you know like I don't want to just ignore a region for you know a, a lot of a long period of time. I'm gonna try to play an Ionia deck. But Ionia is pretty weak as a region. I think with Demacia and with Shen is about as good as it gets for them. Expecting Callista. All the world on one arrow. Well, the most important deck to deny is a good reason to play Ionia, but the most important deck, the best deck in the format, deny is not very good against this Frostbite midrange. That's not really that good here. I'm gonna let him have this one. Good, I'm glad no Callista again.
I think we can wait with Assessor. I don't think we need to do Assessor immediately. So if they block the Ash, which is probably the card they want to block the most, um, they would just gain two life from 19, so they're only gaining one life. So we shut down, you know, like we take that life gain and put it in half. Playing the box. And rekindler. Maokai is best basically leveled up. I want to keep I want to keep my options open. Playing Assessor basically shuts down my options for the rest of the turn. I want to, I want to keep my options open. Fast pass. I could definitely see this being a ruination deck. I could see this being a ruination deck. Which means I want to play Assessor. Okay, round eight. I don't get to go Hearth Guard and Assessor. We fight for one Freljord. Definitely possible I should just be attacking for eight. This should work. Alright, GG's. Too much power. That game kind of shows you how Ruination doesn't really work against this deck because not only does do they have the card draw with Assessor, but they can also just spend not very much mana to put a lot of power into play when you have things like, uh, especially with um, you know, the two mana five one, you know, like I, they, I tapped out to three mana, they ruination. And then I still just put eight power into play with the three mana with the six, two and the two, two.
All right, and we're playing against some scouts. Well, I like all these cards. Um, we need to draw some early units, probably. Maybe. Maybe I get rid of Babbling Beard to look for something cheaper, and then I, I guess Elixir of Iron too. I think Reckoning is probably amazing in this matchup. Yeah, so I was trying to have Callista bring back Shipwreck Hoarder to flood the deck with um, to flood the deck with treasures. That is pretty cool. I don't know, that Laurent Protégé, like if I just go Trapper, Laurent Protégé, like if they play Misfortune would just kill, would kill my Trapper for free. No prey. No prey. I don't really want them killing my, my uh, Trapper for free. Quinn, play Quinn, 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 Quinn. Fortune favors the I'll do. The ocean is no place for the weak. And that's why I kept Hearthguard and Reckoning. That's why I kept that. <laughs> I felt their heartbreak. Yeah. So this deck's just insanely good. I would be, like I said, I'd be real confident in just playing this deck all day as far as ranking up goes. Um, the Fear of the North didn't look that great, to be honest. Could definitely see that being third Sejuani. Like, that's that's the, you know, not sure. Um, I think in those games, small sample, that Sejuani would have been better than the Fury of the North. So that's something to kind of watch out for. Um... You know, yeah, Sejuani's just amazing. So, maybe just be better than that Fury. Um, yeah, exactly. <laughs> this deck is so strong, but yeah, no, I understand seeing it too much and stuff. But it, it's Rank Up Sunday, so I just kind of played it again. Uh, so, if those of y'all that want to play the best deck in the format, this is the best deck in the format. And I, I think I'd probably recommend Third Sejuani. I don't know, that's that's tough, tough call there because you can have some times where Sejuani's get stuck in your hand and you want the, you want the spell um yeah yeah I've definitely I know that uh one of the last times that we played this I won won a game specifically on that fury so you know we did we did lose one game we we lost a game against an Ezreal Swain deck where their their hand was perfect um if you kind of look at like their curve like for what their deck does it was perfect and mine was pretty bad with having two brittle steals and a harsh winds in my first five cards cards that don't don't do very much so we lost one game that'll happen uh but anyway this deck's amazing and i don't know as far as like nerfs go for this deck they'll probably have to change something with this deck because it's, it's just too efficient all over the place but there's not like any one one card that is like super egregious I, things I could see happening. I could see, like, probably what what I would, I guess, what I would do if it was up to me, what I would do is I would change Triparian Assessor to, say, 
when I'm summoned, um, draw one if you have an ally with five plus power. So like Trifair Ancestor only draws one card. So you know it's a it's still like a four mana four three draw card, which is you know nothing nothing wrong with that. But as is, this is pretty absurd the amount of card draw you can get with this Assessor. Um, you know, because then then it'll start you know then it'll be kind of closer to Babbling Bjerg of like you know Babbling Bjerg is like four mana three three draw one card. This is. Four mana, four three, so four three instead of three three, and then draw a million cards, <laughs> kind of thing. Um, I could see, you know, Trapper used to be a two two. I could see them going back and changing Trapper to be a, a three three or a two three, but or sorry, sorry, uh, sorry, a two three or a three two. You know, like basically remove either a health or a power from Trapper, because um, as is, a three mana three three is like just is a great card on curve, and then you you know, so you're not. You're not paying any price to get a one mana five five, basically. Like there's no there's no downside here of playing a three mana three three. Like there's there's no price being paid. So I could definitely see this being a three two or a two three. You know, either way. Three three is pretty strong for this card. Um I I disagree with the statement Trapper isn't amazing without Assessor. I I disagree with that statement. Uh, let's see. Those are, those are probably be the, the two I could see. Um, like that's, that's probably if, like, if I would change something, I would change those two things. I third, third things I could see harsh winds and reckoning, just both of those cards, just going to seven mana instead of six, you know, either one, you could have seven mana, harsh winds, seven mana reckoning for how they, that's just kind of something with just spells in general. They seem to be doing just all over the place, all sorts of spells. Just they're just tacking on additional mana. You know whether it's like your, I mean it's mostly Ionia stuff, like your deep meditations and your um, wheel of Ionias and that kind of stuff. I could see either of those changing, and then finally like Sejuani, I could see. I would not mind something with Sejuani being different. Um, I think like five five instead of five six would be perfectly reasonable. Um, I don't know about four five, maybe, but you could maybe do four five with Sejuani because you're still getting a two mana spell with the Frostbite Vulnerable and it's Overwhelm, um, and then you also have uh, this whole thing that's amazing. Getting five getting five six with all of this stuff is is a lot. You're know, getting a free two mana spell and a five six overwhelm for six mana plus something that just dominates like that in the region of freljord when you have avros and hearthguard and omen hawk and you have all these other things that pump up the power and health anyway so it's it's pretty rare to have five six sejuanis right like it's it's probably over 50 percent of the time whenever you play sejuani that sejuani is like a six seven or, or better but i don't i don't think there really needs to be a reason why like if you look at the other, like the other five and six mana cards, they're basically like five fives are kind of like the, they're the baseline, right? Like Hecarim five five, like there's just five fives everywhere. I could just see Sejuani being a five five also. Like Sejuani gets to eat all of those at five six, and th that just makes Sejuani a little strong. So those are some things that I could see changing, or that maybe I'd think about changing to nerf the deck if I was in charge. Um, I don't. Yeah, I wouldn't. I wouldn't make frost. I think frostbite at at burst speed it actually makes a lot of sense. Um, at at you know at times it'd be nice. You know, it'd be better to have fast speed where you can cast deny on it. Like that would be good at times. But then other times, like it makes sense to have burst speed because if you do the harsh wind, or like if you frostbite something initially and put it to zero power, then then the other person can go like fury of the north and. Um, buff it up uh also fury of the north this is a card i could see costing five instead of four but anyway but then you can play your fury of the north and so then it's not zero power anymore right because then you, you can buff up the power after that but if it's if the harsh winds is or your frostbite if your frostbite is fast speed then you then you just have to like you can't play fury of the north because 
once you know once the fast speeds re resolve then you're going into combat so like you can't buff up anything so they're just always going to be zero power in combat and so that that could make life a little more difficult um where you couldn't use any kind of you know you can't play like a repost or a or you know anything that would buff your power afterwards if it was fast speed So it kind of makes sense for this to be burst speed. The problem, the problem is, is that's just super powerful with Ash. Um, that's just so powerful with Ash. I could even see like Ash is ridiculously good. I could even see just this bottom line removing and then changing the leveled up Ash to be something else. The enemies with zero power can't block is ridiculously good ex with the burst speed frostbite in particular. All right, but anyway, that's it here for Midrange Frostbite. Those of y'all watching on YouTube, hit that like button over there. And, of course, feel free to leave those comments as well. But anyway, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you for the next video.